Hello and welcome. This is episode two of a book review series within a podcast, Engineer to Measure. I'm your host, Alex Maestrenko. In this podcast, we are diving into the essence of engineering management. Apart from the review with their experienced AMs, we host this series of AM-related book reviews. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. We've already selected two books for the next reviews. One book is from 2023 by a well-known newsletter author. Another one has been just released in April 2024. Can you guess which ones? Suggest in the comments below. So the book today is from Sarah Drusner. It is called Engineering Management for the Rest of Us. This book was released on November 1st, 2022. Sarah Drusner is a director of engineering at Google and Vue core team member. Previously worked at Netlify, Microsoft and Trula Zillow Group. She co-organizes conferences and workshops and has 15 years of experience as a web developer. Their book was chosen because it's frequently mentioned on Twitter X and as the title suggests, it's about engineering management. If you'd like to have your favorite book reviewed, put it in the comments below. The book contains 24 chapters that are organized in four parts. Part one is called Your Team. This part comprises chapters about the classic team-related topics. Caring for your team, building trust and being vulnerable, making the team happy and establishing the drive environment. Sarah also talks about approaching career lettering and having one-to-one -one meetings. In my opinion, one chapter from this part creates a core for the book. It is called the value of values. It emphasizes the importance of understanding and aligning values to drive success. Part two is called collaboration. Moving beyond their team organization topic, Sarah drives the reader to the communication that happens in the team. She discusses the topics of change management, giving and receiving feedback and managing conflicts. She shares her view on the definition of a good meeting and some practical advice on how to improve meeting qualities. This is of major importance and their meetings are the core of the manager's job whether you like it or not. Part three is called helping your team to do their best work. When the team is aligned and you understand how to set up the collaboration, the book focuses on the approach to prioritize team's work, understanding and improving the speed of execution, and splitting team's effort between product and engineering work. Part four is called your work. The final part is about you and your work. The book shares approaches and advice about prioritizing, setting boundaries, and crucially, believing in yourself. I think that one of the book's strengths is its concise and practical approach. Sarah avoids complex frameworks, opting instead for clear, actionable advice applicable to manager at any stage of their career. A recurring theme throughout the book is the importance of values. Sarah underscores how individual, team, and company values influence decision-making and behavior, making it a key takeaway for any leader. Additionally, the book includes reference to books, articles, and even podcasts. Some of the books I'm considering getting for myself, such as Hell Yeah or No by Derek Sivers or Nonviolent Communication for Marshall Rosenberg. These books add further depth to the learning journey of the manager. In conclusion, Engineering Management for the Rest of Us offers a structured and insightful look at management principles without overwhelming readers with frameworks. I highly recommend it to managers at all levels of experience. I decided to review three selected chapters from the book that I find particularly interesting to show the feeling of the book. So chapter two is called the value of values. This chapter highlights the importance of understanding values for effective teamwork and management. Values are the fundamental beliefs that guide us, motivate us, and drive our actions. Actually, a person's value dictate their behavior and ethics. Values provide us context so that we can be more understanding and what is happening and why. Now, take a break and think about your values. Do you have your three most important values on the top of your mind? Can you say them out loud right now or do you have to pause for a while to think about them? I personally had to step back and think. This shows the absence of clarity and rather unconscious decisions in whatever you are doing. Sarah proposes to do a team exercise and share individual values in the team. This not only builds trust but also encourages vulnerability within the team. Such exercise can be challenging, especially in teams with low level of trust. However, it's actually most valuable to do something like this when it's uncomfortable. The book stresses that successful teamwork is built on mutual understanding, which is established by revealing individual values and sharing company and team values. It emphasized that there are no wrong answers when it comes to values. Remember, 
clarity is a key. Chapter 13 is called Good Meetings. When you become an engineer, managers' meetings become your work. They are fundamental aspects of communication and team dynamics. This chapter provides insight into organizing effective meetings, including coordination, documentation, and avoiding common pitfalls. So, what is a good meeting? It's a meeting with a clear purpose and agenda, ensuring that the right people are present, enough to make things move forward, but not so many that communication becomes difficult. There is some order, clear decision, outcome, and next steps in the end. Challenges in hosting meetings include bringing together individuals who are unfamiliar with one another and determining their appropriate number of attendees. If you are inviting everyone to the meetings out of a fear to hurt feelings, it's likely not a problem with your meetings and more a sign that roles and responsibilities aren't clear for everyone. A good meeting must have a directly responsible individual. That is a person who is going to own the outcome. The last chapter for review is chapter 22, which is called setting boundaries. In the context of supporting others in your work, it's easy to neglect your own needs and stretch yourself, think. Therefore, setting your boundaries as a manager and individual is essential for maintaining well-being and effectively support your teams. Saying no, though uncomfortable at first, can be an act of courage that ultimately benefits the team. This is the first boundary. Remember to practice it. The next critical boundary is guarding against too many meetings, especially those that you don't find valuable. Clean up your calendar and give yourself some time to think. Then there are mental self boundaries. Be a resilient manager, you must forgive yourself. You can't do everything, it's because no one can. People on social media often showcase only their successes. Avoid comparing yourself to these external portrayals. Make decisions that are right for you. Trust your instincts to know what you need. Setting boundaries involves various aspects such as prioritizing tasks, communication styles, and personal and organization tolerance levels. Aligning boundaries with your values is crucial, requiring continual adjustment of what you accept or reject. It's important to know that setting boundaries doesn't require rudeness. It's a healthy practice. Engineering Management for the Rest of Us is a must-read book for both newer and experienced engineering managers. The book provides a practical toolkit to help you navigate the complexities of leadership and address your individual needs. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed the review, please share it with your friends and colleagues. Also take a guess at which books we will be reviewing next. Stay tuned for our next episode and remember to keep learning and growing in your engineering management journey.